Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for another lovely day. I want to take a moment just to rant at you a little bit here. So what I'm going to talk to you about for a second is the importance of doing the math practice problems every week, right? Even if I don't require you to hand them in to me, which I don't, it is still very important for you to do them. Why? Because it gives you the opportunity to apply the skills you learned. The reason I'm having this conversation is I did a poll in three of my four math groups this morning and half of you admitted that you had not done any of the practice problems that I assigned to you for this week that I explicitly instructed you in our meets yesterday morning in the written instructions for the assignment and in yesterday's video. So three times I said, work on those problems. I didn't say you have to finish them. I didn't say you have to hand them in. I just said work on them. So what that means is begin to apply the skills that we learned yesterday so that today we'd be a step ahead. Half of you did not do that. Why is that a problem? Well, first of all, let me be clear. It's a problem for you. It's not as much of a problem for me, but that's a side. Application of skills, otherwise known as practice, is a very important part of the learning process. And it's very important in math. So I need you to understand you're only hurting yourself if you're not doing these practice questions. And the reason I keep nagging you about it is not because it affects me directly if you don't do those problems. Whatever. I can do this math. I can do grade 12 math. I passed high school and university, took math all the way. I'm good at math. I, I don't need these skills. Who needs them? You do, right? I'm a teacher. That means that I care about you and I want you to be successful. I wouldn't have been a teacher for as long as I have been a teacher if that wasn't true. That's what keeps me teaching. I care about you guys. I want you to be successful. So that's the only motivation I have to keep nagging you to just practice. Okay, so think about it this way. Imagine you want to learn to play the guitar. You go to lessons, the teacher says practice every day, 30 minutes, but you don't for whatever reason. Roblox is more fun. I'm going to do that. You show up at your next lesson and the teacher's like, hmm, well, you're not really better at the chords that I taught you in the first lesson. So we better go back and like review those chords. So you're not progressing really. And then by the time you get to the end of the year and you have to show up at the recital, how are you going to sound? Not very good. Um, maybe you're like, whatever, I don't care about music. What about sports, right? Imagine you're on a soccer team. When we play on teams, we usually spend at least twice as much time practicing as we do at games, right? So imagine you're on a soccer team, but your team never has any practices. Then you show up for a tournament against teams that have been practicing on a regular basis twice a week. You would almost certainly lose every game unless something weird happened, like all of their players got hit by lightning or something, right? All right, so could you have a musical or athletic gift? Yes. Would that make it easier for you to learn guitar and be good at soccer without practice? Yes, but it only gets you so far, right? You still need to practice. Um, it'd be a little bit easier for you than someone who wasn't born with that kind of a gift, but it doesn't mean that you never have to practice. Even the most successful people at the top of all of their fields, whether it's a mathematician or an athlete or a musician or whatever, they got there partly because they had a gift, but the vast majority of the reason that they're there is because they were dedicated and they did practice a lot to improve on the skills they had. Okay, so whether you find it easy or not, that is not relevant. Everybody needs to practice and improve, right? It's like reading. You didn't learn to read because your kindergarten teacher said, ah says A, or A says ah, and B says B, and C says S or K, right? No, you needed to know that as step one. But then the reason you learned how to read is because you read a lot. You tried, you failed, people helped you, you practiced, you practiced, you practiced. Hours, weeks, years of practice to be able to learn how to read. Same thing goes for math. Okay, so I get it. It's not the most fun thing to do. Um, not many people are just like, woo, homework. I'm going to practice my academic skills. That's not reality. But... 
this is one of those times in life where it really doesn't matter if you like it or not, you have to do it. So as I often say to students, this is a suck it up buttercup moment, all right? So do you wanna do the math problems? Probably not, but suck it up buttercup, do them, you need to. All right, thank you for listening to my TED Talk. Okay, what do we need to know for tomorrow? It's Wednesday, so there's no meets in the afternoon. During our morning meet, we're going to focus on science and I'll go over both the assignments in detail and answer any questions you have so that you're all set up for the afternoon where you have that whole block of time, not early dismissal, asynchronous learning time. So I recommend you focus on your science during that time. It'll be fresh in your mind and you have a nice large block of time to do it in. You do also need to read your fairy tale draft out loud and consider on where you can improve it before Thursday morning. So you might want to spend some time on that tomorrow if you haven't already done, on, done that. You need to focus on the areas of word choice, sentence structure, and voice. Those are the three things that we're focusing on. This is the stage where we add artistry to our writing. It's an advanced skill and editing to improve those is a very advanced skill. Probably one of the most important things that you'll learn and practice this year in language arts. So we're done. All of that information that you need to know. Let's talk about the email code. Kayla was the only student who watched my afternoon greeting yesterday. Wow. So Kayla gets 10 points. Now, six other students did email me the word before their first meet this morning. And that is the criteria for CBE Learn that you watch that video before your first meet. So 10 points to these six people as well. Faison, Hannah B, Christian, James, Cora, Mirab, Hasher, and Maishia. Let's see if we can improve our numbers tomorrow and get more than seven people watching. We're already up from six to seven. So let's go from seven to, I don't know, how about 25? That would probably be the right number. Anyway, your email code to send to me tomorrow is moon, M-O-O-N. Put that in the subject line. Don't write anything in the body. I'm not going to read an email from you. I mean, I will if it's legitimate, but for moon, just write moon. That way I can just count them and we'll move on. And I will see you at our next meet. Bye.